How you do? This is Patrick, and this is my review of Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 12. Uh, it was called Better Angels, and it was pretty good. Um, I probably, it was probably the best episode since the premiere of the second season, um, and it was one of the few episodes this season that could probably beat the quality of uh, some of the episodes from the first season. Um, and uh, the show is tending to prove that when its characters are in an interesting situation, it the show delivers. Um, uh, I'll save that stuff for next week with the finale, but um, really good episode. Third, you know, really good one in a row. In fact, they've gotten better. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week's episode, uh, which, you know, that hasn't happened in a while for this show. I've been looking forward um, every single week, but I have just in time for it to go off the air, naturally. Um, I'll get to the end of it. Um, I'll just start, I guess, with the beginning. I had a good beginning, good opening that was cutting um, the juxtaposition of uh, of Dale's funeral with them just killing random walkers. Um, you know, had the blend of the uh, of the gore and the pathos as the show is uh, going for um, pretty much all the time. Um, it was a nice speech. Um, you know, it, I like that Dale wasn't just like a one-off and like it wasn't mentioned you know there was you know they didn't just almost like how Sophia they kind of went over it pretty got over it pretty quickly like even like the mother of, of what's her name Carol like really it didn't have like a, a proper reaction um I don't know it didn't seem like it did at least it, maybe if I went back and watched it it would but this episode it was there was some nice stuff um everything that happened with Carl in the episode um, and the stuff with Glenn, the stuff with Glenn and Andrea when they were fixing Dale's uh, van. Normally, that would be something that people would complain about as just two characters talking and whatever. But it was there because of what happened last week. It was nice that they were able to service, their, continue to service the character that they lost, and um, that the RV means something. You know, it was just it was a nice a nice scene. Um, showing uh, like Glenn showing his regret, Andrea really you know, being there for him and really, you know, thinking back, at least, you know, thinking kindly about, um, Dale, who she, for most of the season, was against. Um, so that, that was, that was nice to see. Uh, Glenn and Maggie still gotta get it, you know, next week. You know next week he's gonna, uh, they're probably just gonna get back together or something like that next week, I assume, anyway. Um, let's see. Before I think, oh, Carl, the stuff where Carl told Shane, um, and then Shane told Rick, um, I like how the way that worked, that like Carl probably wouldn't go to Rick, he would go to Shane, and I like what Shane said to Rick as he was getting under his skin yet again, but this time, uh, it was almost for like a reason, um, or it served like the purpose of the episode. It wasn't just Shane being a douchebag again, it was Shane being a douchebag while, you know getting Rick to talk to his kid. And I thought that was a really good scene with uh, Rick and his kid in the barn. Um, basically just telling him to grow up. Um, which is what he needed to hear after last week. And, um, you know, i still still not a fan of everything that happened with him last week, but it was nice that he very quickly is going to probably not do any of that shit again. He's just going to be much more mature about it. Uh, at the end of the episode, again, I'll get to that, but... That scene in the barn, it was a nice, like, speech by Rick where he just said, told his son that, you know, everyone's gonna die someday, and I'm tired, it was just, it was, it felt like a very genuine scene, not a, a typical, you know, TV show, Father the Son talk. Um, got a little hall mar marky at the, um, just at, with the last shot, uh, of it. It seemed very little house on the prairie, but, um, maybe that was intended. Uh, though he did just give him, he did just give him a gun, so I guess maybe that's why they did it. Um, T Dog got some lines this week. Um, it's uh, it's amazing. Uh, I'm not like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the character in general, but the fact that you know he went from a major character to just being like a basically an extra in the background. At least he got a couple of lines this week, made a couple of jokes. Uh, even had a uh, stereotypical hell no, you know, for that that one scene. Uh, but at least he was there, part of the group. Maybe that's what it takes: kill off a couple of characters and then you know move some people to the forefront. Um, everyone finally moved into the farm. 
uh, to Herschel's house just in time for I'm sure everyone to leave by next week. Um, all that was fine. Lori talking to Shane and almost completely inadvertently setting everything off. Uh, it was too bad because it was a good scene. It was a good confession, you know, for her. Um, and you almost hope for, like, Shane to just take it and, like, move forward. Um, but he couldn't. He, uh, he had to bring the guy out and break his neck. Um, and he was just watching, like, what are you doing? There was just, you knew there was no going back for him now. Um, uh, I just thought they would get to what they got to this week, next week. Uh, so it was actually kind of cool that they didn't get to it this week. Um... But once again, before that, uh, the new development is that walkers don't have... People don't have to be bit to become walkers. Basically, all they have to do is die by pretty much anything other than some sort of head trauma or being shot to the head. Um, uh, I guess like the CDC thing, they would vaporize. Obviously, they're not going anywhere. But um, it's a pretty messed up thing. Um... Because it essentially means that even when, even if these characters live to old age and die naturally, they're just going to wake back up. And the whole idea of the next stage uh, of life after you die is just you become a zombie. Like, uh, you know, that, that sucks. That's pretty grim. Um, that's incredibly grim, in fact. Uh, and I heard, I think, I, I looked online after this episode about, uh, at least people were talking about this episode... Uh, and they're saying apparently the comic book has done the same thing, or that they took a little longer to reveal it. Um, also, there was some there is some nitpicking with that. I mean, they saw that whole big traffic jam in the beginning of the uh, season here, and a bunch of dead people were in the road. First of all, how'd they die? They weren't zombies, so why the hell, if they weren't zombies, why were they sitting there? And two, if they did die naturally, you know, why weren't they up walking around? The one of the writers, the creator of the show, basically said like, "Oh, you know, because they all had a blunt force trauma to the head, like all of them, all hundreds of them, or well, maybe there wasn't hundreds. I don't know. I guess that's nitpicking, and that's nitpicking, which is something that with the show you you, you can't do, um, because it gives you enough reasons to get annoyed with it. You gotta leave the nitpicking out of it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, all right, I guess I'll just get to it. The uh, scene with Shane and Rick was." Just beautifully shot, really well acted. Um, it was just beautifully done. Um, he pulled the gun on him. I was like, "Wow, you know, they're going here tonight," and um, and it was important that Rick, I think, stabbed him. Um, again, I saw, I read this after um, people were complaining that apparently in the books Carl does shoot Shane like he did in the episode, but. Um, he didn't shoot a zombie Shane, he just shot a regular Shane in the head. Um, and people were complaining that apparently that doesn't, that ruins that kind of death or whatever. Uh, I don't know, I kind of think like Rick doing it makes sense. I mean, they've been waiting for this confrontation for two seasons now, so uh, I didn't mind it that way. And Carl still got to shoot him, he still got to shoot him in the head. Um, he was a zombie, but they hadn't done enough with Carl's character to completely do a 180 to shoot just regular Shane. Zombie Shane, okay. Um, plus it changes like last week when he didn't, he missed shooting the zombie in the head, where this one he bullseyed him, right, you know, right between the eyes. Um, but anyway, great scene with Andrew Lincoln and Joe Barenthal, Barenthal, whatever his name is. Uh, great swan song for Barenthal. Um, he was awesome on the Pacific in the one episode that he was in. Um, and he's been fantastic on this show. Um, the problems that I've had with some of the choices the characters make and whatever has really not been any of the actors' fault, uh, especially him. Uh, it sucks to see him go, but I hope this will bring other interesting things to the forefront. And um, I said forefront way too many times this review. Um, but I hope it does. Um, and the end of the episode just proves that next week's finale is going to be pretty nuts. And it's going to be good. Uh, I think the show's proven that when when, like, shit hits the fan, it's at its best. And to be honest, you know, that's... I'd much rather have a meandering middle of a season than, you know, a strong middle and a lousy finish. We're gonna have a pretty good finish, I think, next week. Um... I think that's it. Uh, yeah. Uh, fantastic episode. Um... 
I'm excited about next week, and uh, let me know what you guys thought. Uh, I don't think I left anything out. If I did, get to it in the comments or get to it next week. I'll do like a whole season review on top of the finale, uh, which will basically be the same bullshit I've been talking about all throughout the episodes. I won't do a long season review. But all right, that's it. Later.